Hello, welcome to my first attempt at a YouTube video. I am an Australian, if you haven't already been able to tell by the accent. I'm an artist and I do bullet journaling as well. As you can see, it's covered in cat hair. So any illusions of aesthetic that I might have had, um, get used to that being not a thing. Anyway, my name's Mick with an M. M-I-K. If you're here from Facebook stalking me from high school, hey, I see you. Yeah, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. Nothing much has changed. I'm still just an introvert who likes to try and draw things badly and likes books. Anyway, today I'm gonna do my May setup. Parts of it are a recreation of Amanda Rach Lee's May plan with me playing with her. Uh, this is going to be a recreation of hers, so some of it is similar and a lot of it has my own spin on it. Please excuse any frame changes or lighting changes or, you know, any other stuff that would suggest that I'm a new YouTuber because that's... I don't have an excuse. So, at risk of sounding like every other YouTuber ever, let's just jump into it. This is a voiceover, if you couldn't already tell. First things first, I am not going to sit here and lie to you by saying that I don't know that this is going to come out on like May 3rd or some shit, which for all intents and purposes in the bullet journaling community makes it useless. I just won't do that, because as I'm sure will become clear the longer this channel goes, if it doesn't just die out the ass straight up, I am just perennially late. It's a disease, truly. Congenital, I reckon. My dad has never got anywhere on time in his entire life. Point is. I'm going to just sit here and own it and hope that if anybody here is actually going to recreate this, they're just as late to the game as I always am. Which is essentially impossible, since I'm pretty sure that anyone who actually bullet journals on a regular basis is approximately 643 times more organised than I am at any given moment. And if you don't bullet journal, well, good, I guess. Maybe this will entertain you through the sheer power of speedy drawing clips. Anyway, on to the explainy part. This spread, as I said in the intro, was inspired pretty heavily by Amanda Ragely. On the ridiculously off chance that you're here and you're unaware of who she is, Amanda Ragely's a YouTuber and she doesn't need my help whatsoever, I will link her in the description anyway. Consider it a name drop. Not that I know her in any capacity, other than being a huge stan. So Amanda Ragely has like a bajillion subscribers, she's super talented, and she's considered the queen of the bullet journaling community by most people, as far as I know. She was my first window into bullet journaling, and after about two of her videos I was hooked and absolutely needed to go down to my local Kaisercraft and find some shitty quality dot grid journal to copy paste her art into. And by that I mean, the first journal I made was pretty much just a collage of my favourite Amanda Rachley themes. If you're interested in seeing a worse version of her condensed works, I don't know why you would be, but let me know. I'll do a flip through. Nowadays, I like to let her themes inspire me more than I do copy them. Once I found my feet and sort of got the hang of this whole bullet journal thing, I became more self-sufficient. At least, I like to think so. But I'm still shit for brains in the ideas department, no doubt about it. So Amanda's theme was heavily influenced by Animal Crossing, which pretty much every e-girl and her cat's playing at the moment, which is why some of these flowers are up in here looking like the ones in the game. Now, while Amanda's theme is heavily game and spring inspired, I wanted mine to edge closer to autumnal florals. So I've gone for more muted, warm tones rather than the bright primaries that Amanda chose. And yes, I said autumnal. It's autumn, not fall. What idiot went outside and thought, oh, look at that, falling leaves. Maybe that's what we should call this season. Fall, fuck yeah, I'm a genius. Come on, pal. If you think it's fall, that's fine. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. But I refuse to write out that charade in the hopes of luring in any unsuspecting Americans. Not that Americans aren't welcome here, I'd just like to think I'm more genuine than to trick people into watching my videos by pandering to their beliefs. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Apparently, I totally forgot about my whole autumn vibe anyway when I copied out the quote that Amanda used too, which is undoubtedly spring related, but there you have it. 
I've also gone through and put up on the screen the different products that I'm using every now and again, but I do chop and change a lot, so if you're interested in anything that I use in this video, please have a look at the description down below. I will pop it down there, hopefully some Amazon links as well. And our make cover page is done. Moving on, I've set up a calendar using the minimalistic horizontal lines only vibe, chucking a thick green line over top of the black one, then using flowers to indicate the days. I've gone and written May along the side in some nice little modern calligraphy kind of stuff. This is using the Fudenosuke again, it's a hard tip calligraphy pen, it's really great, probably my favourite thing ever. So here I'm just writing in the days of the week, Monday through Sunday, and after this you are about to see my favourite part of the editing. Boop, 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 boop. I had to edit that twice. I lost a huge chunk of this work while I was editing because the program decided to just stop working. It was great. So I did this twice, painstakingly, but I got faster at the second time so that's pretty sick for a silver lining I reckon. Pop the numbers in there. Now I'm going to add some leaves. And then after that I'm going to move over to the side where I thought that May was looking a bit boring and shit on its own there, so I have popped in a vertical line of green, tie it in, make it look a little less crap over there. And there you go, Robert's your dad's brother. Calendar. Moving on. So this will be the last spread, it's the weekly spread, and it goes for the longest. I have probably the least to say about it. There's a couple things in here that you probably won't need. Hell, I won't even need them next week. But they're there and they're pretty simple. So you can either get rid of them and make room for something else or use them something different. So anyone who's familiar with bullet journaling is going to be like, Wait, weekly spread? Where's your habit tracker? Where's your mood tracker? That, that's you. That's my impression of you. Anyway. Well, I'll tell you what. I never fill them out when I make them to cover the whole month. It's just another thing I suck at that I'm trying to accept and integrate into my life. 
I still think that they're really useful though, and they seem way less daunting to my weird little anxious brain if they only last a week at a time. So my habit and mood trackers are part of this spread on the left, just under the weekday boxes there. I like to track my coffee consumption, sleeping patterns, and moods, and recently I've tried adding water in there to guilt myself into drinking more of that, but it doesn't seem to be working. And the way that I track those isn't to use the conventional method of colouring in a box every day I do the thing, but instead to graph it, so I'll have a descriptor or number on the x-axis. For those of you out there who aren't math geniuses like I am, that's the horizontal line across the bottom of the box, and along the y-axis, the vertical line up the side, I'll put the numbers 1 to 7 to indicate Monday to Friday. Now, I'm going to take this interlude to give you another one of my many opinions. The first day of the week, shocker, it's not Sunday, it's Monday, and I will fight you about it. Whoever decided that technically the first day of the week is Sunday is a nut job. Sunday is the final day of the week, the final day of rest, a day of mourning for the end of the weekend. Do not try to tell me otherwise. In this case, I don't even think you're entitled to your wrong opinion. Sue me. I'm starting a movement. So anyway, as you'll see, I've got the days of the week with a nice little border including the writing there and I just used one box for two days of the weekend because let's be real, we're in quarantine. I don't have to schedule shit in because there's less than nothing to do. Then I've got my trackers, a section for the notes, then right down the bottom they're essentially a pair of to-do lists. They have to do with my real job and the one on the left will include sensitive information which is why this is unfinished, but the simplest explanation for it is that it's a to-do list. The one on the right is a checklist for chapters of a book I'm filming myself read, which I absolutely will not be posting here. I have recently learned that I absolutely fucking suck at reading out loud on camera. Just not my calling. But I do have to do it, hence the checklist. So that on that, buckle in and wait for the flip through, which is super exciting, I know, since you just saw the entire process, and then stay tuned for bloopers if that's your cup of tea. Thanks for watching. This is what I get for having cheap